we love growers and we love to grow stuff. From the amazing cannabis plant to bonsai trees. We, and the bonsai trees are our real passion. We travel around with a group of friends and, and we learn to, we are involved in that community. And I've taken what I've learned from bonsai, though they're, they're different animals in some degrees, into the cannabis industry. And it's all about learning to train the plant and about how to uh, get what you want and how to manipulate that. So can you start with bonsai and talk about like the art of training a bonsai tree? Absolutely. So a bonsai tree starts off, it can be in uh, a tree that you pull out of a ground, or I have trees as, as old as 250, 300 years old. And we begin to train bonsai by uh, changing the root structure. And you can start bonsai from uh, trees that are out in nature all the way to uh, from a nursery plant. You can go to your local nursery and, and buy a, a tree. We'll do different types of grafting techniques. We're, we'll uh, graft a, a, a black pine onto a red pine rooting system, for example, um, to try to change the dynamics or the genetics of a tree, if you will. Um, we'll do air layering to take, a, let's say you have a larger tree and you want to get the top of it, we can air layer it to get roots growing out of that and then cut that off and um, plant, make a whole new tree out of it. So you can actually have two trees. So you get that bonsai tree, like this tree, when you first brought it home. Mm -hmm. So the first thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the tree is healthy. So. Um, and make sure that it's in good soil. We would take a, a tree and move it into a bonsai soil, which is uh, typically a combination of akadama and lava, maybe some pumice, depending on the species of the tree. So once we know that the tree and the roots are healthy and happy and, and it's thriving, then we'll begin to train the tree. So there's, there's different levels of training. So when we first get a tree, depending on the age, we want to get some movement in that trunk. We want that tree to look we, not, we want to manipulate that tree to look old and gnarly and, and like it's, it's been through, uh, you know, maybe an, an avalanche or animals have fall, uh, fallen on it or it's just, it's just really struggled through its life. Maybe it's a, a wind swept sile that's been on the top of a mountain and, and the wind is blowing it over. Um, so getting some initial styling or initial movement into the trunk to give it something interesting to look at. In bonsai, we are masters of manipulation. We'll take a tree that's maybe, or a plant that's just a few years old, and try to make it look like it's 50 or 100 years old. And in some cases, these trees are. If we get a tree from uh, the Colorado mountains from a specific geological formation called a, a fin, where there's, there's a, a dried up riverbed on top, and then underneath it is a live riverbed. And in the winter time, that riverbed bed freezes, shears off the roots, and it naturally dwarfs those plants, or uh, Rocky Mountain junipers, or that, those types of species that come from the wild. Those, those are called Yamadori trees, and they're really spectacular trees to work on and to, to train. They have such history. I have a Colorado blue spruce that's about this big, that's 250 years old. And to think that that was born during the time of the revolution, there's a lot of respect in that I give to these trees. And bonsai is, it's kind of the art of, it's, it's man's idealistic idea of what a, a tree would look like. And we want to pay homage and respect to that. So in the beginning, we get the tree, we'll give it some movement into the trunk, and then as it, as it. But how are you doing that? Are, are you like, like, like staking it and like, like bending it with rope and things like, like what's that? Yes, okay. yes, all of those things. We'll use uh, wire, is very common to use. If wire isn't enough, we will use uh, tie rods. We will, we get kind of uh, medieval with these sometimes. We will do what's called raffia. We'll, we'll wrap this up it's with like a- like a plant torture, like dungeon torture. Yes, sir. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll wrap like it up a with- masochistic. A, li a little bit, and we're still trying what to respect you, the What you and the wife do behind closed doors, I will not ask, but... <laughs> Probably a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, so the tools you're using, you're, you're starting to talk about them. Yes, so we will we do 
wiring techniques, we will do grafting techniques, we will uh, carve out parts of branches to get them to bend and turn and manipulate them. It like has, literally carve through the bark? Yeah. Yep, yep, you can. There's one technique where you'll actually cut a wedge out of a, a trunk and then bend it over to get to get that movement in something that's older. So if a, if a tree is large and thick and it's not going to move, we have techniques for doing that. And then it'll basically scar over Ex that exactly. spot and you'll have like a gnarly looking... Yeah, so that cambium layer will reconnect if done... And now are you protecting it? Like are you rubbing anything to protect it from pathogens? Because that's basically an open wound, right? Exactly. So that's a really good question. So we, we will do that. We'll, we'll put... Um, uh, depending on the technique that you use, we'll put we, we use different types of paste that that keep any kind of pathogen or insects or anything out of there. Well, it's a cutting paste t typically, and there's different types of paste that you use for different species of trees. We buy specific bonsai uh, paste. Um, azalea, for example, they they love really acidic stuff. They they use a different type of paste than a uh, conifer. And you weren't joking when you're like, we get medieval with these things. You're basically, it's not like, like with cannabis, I feel like people are a little more gentle in there. Or tomato plants, you're not like snapping stalks and... Right, right. So we, we, we will. We, we, we bend these things around. We carve out large branches and turn them. We wrap them with ra raffia and duct tape or uh, electrical tape. Um, to get them to move and to keep them healthy when you when you do that because you really don't you want to push the tree but you don't want to kill it you want to give it every chance it can so we, we might do these techniques over a long period of time if we're going to meal, move a large branch we might move it an inch one day and then next month we'll move it another inch and then maybe in two years we'll move it again between the wire and the rebar um, uh, and the different types of uh, materials that we use. We have different clamps that we'll use to, to bend a tree. We'll, we'll literally tie a branch down uh, to pull it down to make it look like it's, it's aged. So if you can imagine a, a new tree, the branches kind of grow up. They grow like this. On an old tree, they grow, I don't know if you can see this, but they, 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 yeah, they sag from the weight, they sag from the foliage mass, and, and that's what shows the difference between the old and the new trees. So you're trying to make a young tree look old and weathered. Exactly. It's like a Hollywood studio that takes a kid and tries to make them look like an old sure. man. So there's, a, there's another technique we use called ginning or shari, where we'll, we'll take some bark and we'll strip out uh, some, some bark to, to show the inside of the, of the tree, and then we'll, we'll treat that with um, a sulfur to, to make it look white, to make it look like it's weathered or aged. Um, we'll, we'll take a, a branch, maybe, maybe a branch dies during, the, during it, or we have a branch that doesn't really fit our design. We'll strip all the leaves off of it, strip all the bark off of it, and then you have this really gnarly, um, interesting feature that we'll, we'll put on a tree. I have in my Colorado blue spruce I was telling you about earlier, uh, about there's a mark on it about this big, where a hundred years ago a porcupine was nibbling on that, and he would keep that wound open for years to, to, to just feed off the sap or lick up the sap. And uh, now there's this really cool disc feature that's on, on that tree that you can see the open, the, the inside of the tree, if you will. As you come from the bonsai world into things like I mean, tomato plants or cannabis plants, kind of what are, what are some of the nuanced differences and what's similar oh, from your perspective? That's a really good question. So some of the similarities in the training aspects are going to be um, every plant has hormones called auxins, and these auxins are basically what tell a plant to grow up. And those are, and what we do with with bonsai trees and with cannabis is I like to lay those those growing tips down, so it redistributes the auxin hor pro hormone profile. So now we have more grow sites here, 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 and here. Rather than just straight up, we lay it down. And, in bone and then stuff's going to grow this exactly, way. Exactly, exactly. So in bonsai, we create these pads, these beautiful pads that show layered pads that, that give us the artistic look. 
where in cannabis, we have all those extra bud sites that create the beautiful flower that we like. How about tomato versus cannabis? When you're, when you're training tomatoes versus cannabis, Actually, they're, they're, they're quite similar. Uh, obviously, the, the fruit is different. The fruit on a tomato kind of hangs down where uh, the fruit on a, on a cannabis will grow more straight up. Um, but we would train it in a, in a very similar uh, area. So we want to, I like to lay the plants down and do what's called uh, low stress training. There, there's um, what they call um, uh, high stress training or where they actually will smish the cambium layer and bend the plant over um, that and it creates this knuckle as it reproduces the the cambium can you show me on this tomato plant with sure. the stuff you're talking about so like if you just got these like what are you looking at and what do you what as do you a, do? as a tomato plant yeah so as a tomato plant i want to take and i want to train this i want to bring these up and this is what changes that oxen profile i was talking about so as I bring these, these leaves up, and this allows it to get, so the, the, camp, the, the hormone auction isn't here, but when I lay it down, now it begins to transfer that hormone to different areas of the plant. As this plant grows, I will train this down here. I will bring this under here and see these buds here. So now more light gets into the bottom of this, this plant. Same yeah. thing with cannabis we get better light penetration. If this, was, if this were to be grown taller, these tomatoes would come up higher. Um, leaves would, so each one of these leaves are gonna be a, basically a, a solar panel for this plant. And we wanna we want give it that. Um, so we're gonna let these, all of these leaves come up through here and then encourage these flowers to grow. So as this plant grows, this, this these flowers will come out here, these flowers will come here, this plant will do the same thing, we'll bend this down into so here. So what would you want to do with this right here? I would want to get this underneath here, and uh, we can do that by, I just put this in here to hold this up. These have actually grown a little bit since we've been at the show. In like two days. In two days, yeah. Under this healthy fluorescent light right, right. Detroit Convention Center. So we'll bend this out here, and this will encourage us. As this grows, this will come up in this area. Yeah. Now I'm gonna put this back in here with this wire to hold it in place. We use a lot of wire in bonsai too. So I'll grow this up, and as this, this, this terminal flower here, I'll train to come up into this area. Yeah. And the other thing that this, doing this, increases the airflow in your plant. So increasing your airflow increases your nutrient uptake, which gives you better flowers. It um, also reduces things like powdery mildew and mold. Absolutely, that's a good, very good point. Uh, past, and you can get to the plant easier. You can, uh, it's easy. One of the things in both bonsai and cannabis, and, and in life in general, I'm, I'm learning or trying to learn to observe. And, the first thing I do in the morning with my bonsai trees and even my cannabis, I grab my cup of coffee and I go out and I just look at the plant. I look at its health. I look to see if um, uh, there might be any uh, insects or, or any kind of diseases so that I can react to that quick. And when we have a tree that's worth thousands of dollars or a cannabis plant that's worth thousands of dollars, we, we want to take pretty good care of it. So. Learning to observe and understand and know your, the plants that you're dealing with makes all the difference in the world. Plus, it's just fun. It's just fun getting out in the garden, having a cup of coffee, um, and, and just looking at the, the beauty of nature. And sometimes it's, it's, it's kind of therapeutic. It's, it's, really a, it's really a passion. So what are some common mistakes you see when people, when you're watching people like start trying to use like a scrogging system. So if anybody remembers the movie Karate Kid, you know, that's kind of where Bonsai was really initiated or people learned a lot. He said, let the, let the birds fly through. And I think one of the common mistakes is we try to put too much into, a, into an area. So by, by removing um, areas that don't matter, 
or, or are not either part of the design in bonsai or by um, keeping your plant um, so that light can get into it, keep it cleaned out. Um, that allows those that airflow. That allows. You want to give things room to breathe, basically. We want to give things and room. Some space. Absolutely. And even with this, you're trying to use. You're trying to send things out so every area is taken advantage of. Absolutely. So, for example, if this was a, a cherry tomato plant, they get really dense, and I might I might actually clean some of the foliage out at that point. I might actually clean out uh, some of the extra buds or. Like literally clip it. To, to clip it out of there, yep, and and to control the growth. So if I've got something like maybe hanging off here that's gonna gonna uh, reduce the light, I might actually clip clip that out, or I, I would retrain it or move it up uh, to an area that doesn't have as much growth. 